Welcome to the video solutions for the City and Guilds Functional Skills English Level 2 Writing Sample Paper 3. In this video, we will go through the questions and you can get a better idea of what you want your answers to look like, as well as what to look out for when planning your answers. In your writing exam, you will be marked on the following criteria. So your written composition will be worth 56% of the marks and your spelling, punctuation and grammar will be worth 44% of the marks. So what is covered in writing composition? We've got um, things like clear writing that makes sense. We've got detailed writing that is an appropriate length, correct use of organisational features and organisational markers, using appropriate language and register, and using complex sentences. So a really good answer will communicate information, ideas and opinions clearly, coherently and effectively. So that means that your answer has to be easy for the reader to understand. We have to consistently write an appropriate level of detail to suit purpose and audience. So we need to think about why we are writing, what is our purpose, and the audience we are writing for. And then we need to include details that are going to be tailored to them. So we need to be focused on the purpose and audience throughout our writing. We need to organize writing for different purposes, including appropriate format and structure and paragraphs. So we should always use the correct formatting depending on the text type given in the question. And we should always, always use paragraphs effectively. Conveying clear meaning and establishing cohesion using organisational markers. This essentially means that your answer needs to flow effectively. So all of your sentences and paragraphs need to make sense and flow on from each other. Organisational markers are connectives like and, but and so that you can use to connect your ideas together so that everything is joined up. Consistently uses different language and register suited to audience and purpose. Again, we've got to have the audience and purpose in mind and we have to be thinking about the language that we're using. If the audience was a formal audience, for example, some, some a, a group of professionals, uh, then we would have to use that formal language to match that. Consistently and accurately constructing complex sentences. Well, complex sentences are longer sentences that contain multiple ideas. So you're going to have to be able to connect your ideas together accurately. Okay, so let's look at the first question. You work in the head office of a large high street clothes retailer that has many branches throughout England. One of your responsibilities is to visit the company's shops as a mystery shopper and to report back, back to the head office on your experience. Your task is to write a report and give your manager to give to your manager about your visit to one of the shops. The report should include details of your visit, the appearance and tidiness of the store, availability of staff to help you, customer service skill, skills and attitude of the staff and stock availability and you should write 300 words. So in this question, we need to consider the context that we've been given here. So we work in a large high street clothes retailer and we need to visit a shop as a mystery shopper. And then we're writing a report about that shop to the head office. So because we're talking to the head office, reporting to a manager, that's a professional audience, so we're going to need to use formal language. And in our report, we should include details about our visit. So think about um, what kind of things happened on your visit. You can get quite creative with this. The appearance and tidiness of the store. So was it messy or was it tidy? That's up for you to decide availability of staff to help you, customer service skills and attitude of the staff. So we're focusing on the staff here. We want to see their availability, so how many staff were on hand to help. 
and what were they like? Did they offer good customer service or did they show you a bad attitude? And finally, the availability of stock. So what kinds of stock were there and whether there was enough stock in the shop as well. So we need to write 300 words and include all of these details if we can. So let's take a look at a model answer to this question. This answer would achieve full marks in the exam. Gerald Tube, 14th of the 6th, 2023. Mystery Shopper Report. I am writing to provide you with a detailed report on my recent visit as a mystery shopper to one of our company's shops located in Stingthwaite. Upon entering the store, I was immediately struck by its clean and well-maintained appearance. The layout was organised, with neatly arranged displays and clearly marked sections for different clothing categories. The overall tidiness of the store was impressive, reflect reflecting positively on our brand image. Throughout my visit, I observed that there were enough employees present on the shop floor and they were easily identifiable in their company uniforms. When I required assistance, I approached a staff member who was attentive and promptly helped me in a polite way. Their knowledge of the products was exceptional and they were able to find me what I needed quickly. In terms of stock availability, I was pleased to find a wide range of products in various sizes and styles. The shelves were well stocked, however I did struggle to find a few items in my size. Again, the staff were helpful and were quick to offer to order the items into the store for me to pick up the following week. Overall, my experience as a mystery shopper in the Stingthwaite store was highly positive. The store's appearance and tidiness were impressive and the availability of attentive and knowledgeable staff greatly contributed to the exceptional customer service provided. I hope this report provides you with valuable insights. Please feel free to contact me if you require any further information or clarification. So now let's take a look at how this answer fulfills the marking criteria. So let's start with the punctuation that has been used. The answer is correctly used capital letters and full stops throughout at the start and end of sentences. We've also got um, correct use of capitalization of the letter I. Um, whenever we use I to speak about ourselves, it should always be capitalized. We've also got capitalization of Stingthwaite because that is a place. Commas are used throughout the answer and these add further detail to our sentences and help us to link ideas together. So an example is throughout my visit, comma, I observed that there were enough employees present on the shop floor, comma, and they were easily identifiable in their company uniforms. So here we've got throughout my visit to give a time frame and then we linked that to the idea that there are enough employees there and then we link that to the idea that they're easily identifiable. We've also got a use of apostrophes in the answer to indicate possession. So we haven't got any contractions, no uses of words like can't, don't, uh, wouldn't because that would make the answer a little bit more informal and not suitable for the professional audience. But we do have the use of possessive apostrophes, which are perfectly acceptable for a formal audience. So possessive apostrophes are used to show that something belongs to something else. So in this case, the shops belong to the company. They are the company's shops. In paragraph four, we have the use of a hyphen in the word well stocked. Now hyphen is used to join two words together to create a word with a single meaning. There's not a lot more examples of punctuation in here. You could try to be more ambitious, adding things like brackets, colons and semicolons, but it's definitely been used appropriately here for a report. 
Um, we wouldn't expect any questions or exclamation marks in a report. That would be much more informal. Uh, we're simply giving some information and fact-based opinions in a report. So the punctuation use is perfectly acceptable and the student will get full marks for punctuation in this answer. Now let's think about the grammar. So your sentences will need to be accurate and make sense on their own when you're writing your answers. In this answer, everything definitely makes sense. We've had a read through and everything was very clear. We've got the correct use of past tense that is appropriate and accurate throughout because we're talking about a past experience that happened. So you went to the store, had a visit and observed what was happening. So when we read through, all the sentences make sense. Let's have a look in the fourth paragraph. Uh, we can see that the student has used a and the effectively. So for example, we've got the shelves to refer to a specific set of shelves. And then we've got a few items. So that's non-specific um, rather than the few items, which wouldn't make much sense here. So make sure that if you're speaking about something specific, you're using the and something generic, um, you're using a. As well as punctuation and grammar, we need to consider the spelling in the answer. So you need to be spelling words correctly so that your answer is clear and everything makes sense. And in this answer, all of the spelling is accurate and they've included some more trickier and more specialist words um, such as detailed, mystery, and immediately in their answer. So make sure that before the exam, you're comfortable with basic spellings and try your best to include some more difficult to spell words in your answer. If you're struggling to spell a word, then try and think about a different word with the same meaning that you could use that you do know how to spell. So now we've considered the spelling, punctuation and grammar, and overall that is worth 44% of the marks. So nearly half of your marks will come from those elements. So make sure that you are using correct spelling, using punctuation effectively, and making sure that all of your answer makes sense. So now let's look at the composition. So the first thing we want to know is if the answer is clear or not. A good way of doing this is trying to read it through in your head and seeing if everything makes sense to you, because if it makes sense to you, then it will probably make sense to somebody else. So all of the grammar in this answer is correct and the answer is therefore very clear and makes sense. We also need to think about the length of the answer and the level of detail that has been included. It can be tricky sometimes to know how long your answers should be, but sometimes the question will give you a word count. So here we've been asked to write about 300 words. It would take quite a long time to individually count all of the words in your answers. Um, so maybe do that when you're practicing um, so that you know roughly how many words um, that would look like in your exam. So this answer um, fits the suggested word count and an appropriate level of detail has been included. So this answer uses appropriate detail because it's addressing all of the bullet points in the question. So we've got details about the visit to start with. They're talking about the, the visit here all the way through explaining what they saw, what they experienced throughout the visit. So they've definitely covered the details of the visit. Let's look at the appearance and tidiness of the store. Well, that's definitely been addressed here. Clean and well-maintained appearance, organized and neat. The availability of staff. We've got enough employees present on the shop floor and then we've got the customer service skills and attitude of the staff is mentioned as well. Uh, very attentive, promptly helped me in a polite way. 
knowledge of products was exceptional. Finally, we have the stock availability. So they've talked about that. Here, in terms of stock availability, I was pleased to find a wide range of products in various sizes and styles. So we've addressed every single point in the question and we've gone into some detail. For example, um, adding detail like the staff being easily identifiable, um, them being particularly knowledgeable about the products. We've also got mention of the staff being helpful and ordering the items into the store. So you just have to be a little bit creative to come up with some ideas, some details that you could use in your answer and make sure that any details that you include are relevant to the question because you won't get any marks for any details that aren't relevant. We also need to ensure that when we're writing our answers, we're using the correct formatting and organization. So we're choosing appropriate organizational features to match the text type that has been specified in the question. So in our question, we have been asked to write a report. In a report, you should always include lots of factual information, and then you should include opinions that are backed up by these facts. So we've got factual information about the store that's being mentioned here, and then we've got um, the author's opinions about the store as well. So exceptional, um, polite, these are all opinions because they are using adjectives to describe how they felt about the staff members. Reports should also include a title. So here we've got mystery shopper report. They've also chosen to include name and date. Those aren't necessarily needed, but they are useful organizational features to help the reader understand where the reports come from. We could use a few more formatting features like subheadings and bullet pointed lists, but overall this report is satisfactory. Most importantly, we've got paragraphs used throughout the answer, and these are structured in a logical way. So we've got the first paragraph introducing what the report will be about. The second one explains what it was like upon entering the store and gives some positive first impressions. The third one is explaining their opinions of the employees. The fourth is about stock availability and links it back a little bit um, to the staff at the store. And then they, they sort of summarize their overall experience based on this information. And finally, conclude the report and give the option to contact them further. So we've got paragraphs that are ordered particularly logically and each paragraph is about something different. Structuring our paragraphs effectively helps us to tick another marking criteria box because it makes our answer more cohesive. So cohesion means that you've got to link your sentences and paragraphs together and join up your ideas so that they can flow effectively in a logical order. So, for example, in the third paragraph, when we're focusing on employees, we've got this first complex sentence that is making um, two different points about employees, saying that there is enough of them and they were easily identifiable. And then they have explained further that when they required assistance, they approached one of these staff members. So they've linked to the previous sentence by talking about the employees um, and then explaining that they are attentive and help them. And then they've linked on by saying their knowledge of products was exceptional, still talking about the employees. And they were able to find me what I needed quickly. So these sentences flow on from one another really effectively. We've also got the use of connectives in here, um, like and, and we've got this used here as well. And words like that just really help to connect your ideas together and um, to show that you understand that certain ideas go together effectively and other ideas um, can contrast with what you're talking about. 
As well as being a cohesive answer, this answer uses appropriate language and register. So they're using the right language and register to match the reader that the report is aimed at. We're also using the correct kind of tone and style to match the purpose of the report. So when you're writing a report, you should always be focused on facts. And in this case, we're focusing on being a mystery shopper. And we're giving lots of facts about that. So facts about entering the store, the store was clean. Um, these are also, there's quite a lot of opinions included in here. And um, that's relevant for this report because the clothes retailer is looking for your personal experience. So it's also suited to the audience because it's written for a manager. So it needs to be a formal piece and we've definitely got formal language throughout. So we've got standard English used and no slang or colloquial phrases. We've got no contractions such as can't or didn't. Um, it would say cannot and did not instead, which is far more professional. And a good example of the professional language is in this final paragraph. I hope this report provides you with valuable insights. So this isn't the kind of thing that you would say off the cuff to a friend or a family member. It's very professional. We're using sophisticated vocabulary here, valuable insights, and then require further information. Again, very formal language there. Finally, you need to try to use complex sentences in your answers. So use sentences that have multiple ideas that are contained within them. Generally, these will be longer sentences. So we've got a few longer, more complex sentences that join up ideas using more than one clause, using commas and punctuation. So for example, we have this sentence here, the shelves were well stocked, comma, however, I did struggle to find a few items in my size. So putting two, two ideas together here, the shelves being well stocked, but they're struggling to find a few items using this connective, however. Again, the staff were helpful and were quick to order the items into the store for me to pick up the following week. So here we've got two commas used and we have lots of ideas joined up together in a complex sentence. So you should try to include as many complex sentences as possible in your answers to show that you can make connections between multiple ideas and pieces of information. However, you should also make sure that your sentences aren't too long because they might become a little bit overwhelming and might make your answer unclear. So we've seen that overall, this is a really fantastic answer. It effectively answers the question by addressing each bullet point here. It gives an appropriate report using correct formatting features and an appropriate style. The answer makes sense and it flows effectively, especially because the paragraphs are effectively used to separate pieces of information within the text. We've got accurate spelling, punctuation has been used correctly, and the writing is appropriate for the audience and purpose that's specified in the question. So overall, a really fantastic answer, and hopefully this should inspire you to come up with your own ideas so that you can provide an equally effective answer to this question. Let's consider the second question. You work for We Sell To You an online seller of films, books and TV box sets. When a sequel to a film or book is due to be released, or a new episode of a TV drama is coming out, your company posts a blog explaining what happened previously and describing the main characters. Your task is to write a narrative that outlines the plot of your favourite film, book or an episode of a TV series to tell potential customers of the We Sell To You website what happened. We suggest you write about 300 words. 
So what do we need to do in this question? Well, the purpose of our writing is to outline the plot of a film, book or a TV episode. So we have to explain what happened um, during the film, book or TV show. Because we are working for We Sell To You, who sells these films, books and TV box sets, we're going to want to present our ideas quite persuasively so that we can encourage readers to go and buy these things and watch them or read them. So you've got quite a lot of scope here to come up with your own creative ideas, um, choose a film or book that appeals to you and write about it. So now let's have a look at the second question. Remember that you can either try and attempt these tasks before we go through the model answer, or you can wait until we've, you've seen the entire model answer to give you some inspiration and ideas for your own answer. So question two says that you work for We Sell To You, an online seller of films, books, and TV box sets. When a sequel to a book or film is due to be released or a new episode of a TV drama is coming out. Your company posts a blog explaining what happened previously and describing the main characters. Your task is to write a narrative that outlines the plot of your favorite film, book, or an episode of a TV series to tell potential customers of the We Sell To You website what happened. We suggest you write about 300 words. So in this question, we've been given quite a bit of context as well as the purpose of the writing and the audience. So let's break it down. So we're focusing on creating a blog post. So that is the text type that we're looking for here. And the purpose is to explain what has happened previously and describing the main characters in a film or a book or a TV drama. So we've got to choose a film, a book or a TV drama. You could choose anything here, get quite creative with it. And then we have to explain what has happened in the series or book previously and describe the main characters. So we're writing a narrative to explain this. We're outlining the plot of our favorite film, book, or episode of a TV series. So overall, we might try to be persuasive because we are working for someone who is selling films and books online. So we're trying to persuade the reader using the plot that they should go and buy the film, book, or TV series. So now that we know what the question is asking of us, Let's take a look at a model answer for this question. New crime thriller Todd and O'Hara hits screens. Welcome to We Sell To You. As avid fans of thrilling stories, we are delighted to share the enthralling plot of Todd and O'Hara, an unforgettable policing adventure that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Prepare to dive into a world of crime, sus suspense and unexpected twists. Before the second episode of Todd and O'Hara airs on Sunday, let's remind ourselves of what happened last week in the first thrilling episode. Unexpectedly thrown together on a new case, detective partners Todd and O'Hara team up to find the clown killer. The pair struggle to get on at first, finding that their lives are just too detached from one another to find any common ground. Todd is portrayed as an uncaring loner, whilst O'Hara is a glamorous, ambitious detective, with some killer outfits to go alongside the image. Although they try to break up their partnership, they are informed by their bosses that the arrangement is unavoidable and they must learn to like each other. The episode sees the two detectives follow various leads, most being embarrassing dead ends. In one hilarious scene, which promptly lightens the tense mood, 
Todd ends up with a pile of seagull feces on his head, his chips scattered on the sand. Despite their differences, the unlikely pair finally uncover a promising lead, which lands them in the middle of an abandoned fairground. With menacing music coming from the long since abandoned ghost train, they know they must venture inside. Will you be watching this Sunday? We know we'll be on the edge of our seats. So now let's see how this answer fulfills the marking criteria. And we'll start with punctuation. So the answer correctly uses capital letters and full stops throughout. So for example, welcome to We Sell For You. We've got a capital letter at the start of the sentence. And instead of a full stop here, we have an exclamation mark. Now you can use question marks, exclamation marks, or full stops to end your sentences. We've also got capital letters for we sell to you, which is a company name, and capital letters for Todd and O'Hara because these are names as well. We've got commas used throughout the answer to break up ideas and um, add uh, new ideas onto the end of sentences. So we've got before the second episode of Todd and O'Hara airs on Sunday, comma, new idea, let's remind ourselves of what happened last week, comma, and then adding more detail in the first thrilling episode. We've got the use of exclamation marks, such as here and here, to build some excitement and persuade the reader to watch this show. We've also got a dash used in the first paragraph, and a dash is used to connect some ideas together. So talking about the enthralling plot of Todd and O'Hara, and then explaining that this is an unforgettable policing adventure. Finally, in the penultimate paragraph here, we have an ellipsis at the end. Now this builds some suspense for the reader and sort of adds to the excitement um, and persuades them to watch. Finally, we've got a question right at the end to draw the reader in and convince them to watch the show. Will you be watching this Sunday? So we've got correct use of a question mark there. So as well as including a variety of correctly used punctuation, this answer is grammatically correct. What does that mean? Well, it means that each sentence is accurate and it makes sense on its own. The best way to make sure your grammar is correct is to try and imagine that you are reading your answer out loud. So we've read this entire answer out loud and everything made sense. Now let's have a look at the spelling. So you need to be able to spell correctly during your exam and try to use longer words that might be trickier to spell. So all of the spelling in this answer is accurate and we've included tricky specialist words like enthralling, policing, unforgettable, unexpected. So make sure before the exam that you're comfortable with spelling and you're can, you can spell all simple words correctly. It's also a good idea to check your spelling after you've written your answer in the exam. So far, we've talked about spelling, punctuation and grammar. So overall, we have covered 44% of the marking criteria for this question just based on that. So it's quite a hefty chunk of the marks for what we've just talked about there. Now let's think about the composition of the answer, starting with the clarity. So if your answer has clarity, that means that all of, if all of it is clear, it all makes sense. Now good spelling, punctuation and grammar is definitely going to help with this, but to make your answer especially clear, think about what you're writing, and make sure that anybody would be able to understand it. In addition to making sure that your writing is clear, you should also ensure that your writing is detailed and is the appropriate length for the question. So here we've been asked to write 300 words and this meets that word count. We've also been asked to outline the plot of our favorite film, book or TV series. We've chosen a TV series here and we have outlined the plot of one of the episodes. 
We've also got a description of the main characters as specified in the question. So the main characters are described here. Now, other details that we've got, they've explained that it's an unforgettable policing adventure. So including their opinions um, and trying to persuade people to go and watch by saying, prepare to dive into a world of crime suspense and unexpected twists. And then it just concludes with a little bit of detail saying, asking whether they'll be watching on Sunday and saying that they will be on the edge of their seats, excited for the new series. Another thing that we need to consider is how the answer is formatted and organised. So this will depend on the type of text that we've been asked to write. And we've been asked to write a narrative that explains a plot. And we're specifically looking at a blog post here. So when you're writing a blog post, you're going to want a title for your post. And you're going to definitely need to use paragraphs as well. And that this answer does both of those things. You could be a little bit more adventurous and try to use some subheadings and other features like bullet points or lists. But overall, this is a satisfactory use of formatting features here. Your paragraphs should all follow each other in a logical structure. So in this answer, we've got the first paragraph introducing the TV series and getting the reader excited using some emotive language and an exclamation here. Then the second paragraph follows on from that by introducing an explanation of the plot. The third paragraph gives us details about the characters. The fourth one tells us about the plot. And then finally, we have a little bit of encouragement to try and get the reader to watch. So this is a very logical order and each paragraph talks about something different. Using paragraphs effectively will help you to achieve cohesion in your answer. And that's another point of the marking criteria. So to achieve cohesion, we've got to make sure that all of our sentences and paragraphs link together really well and we join up ideas so that they can flow effectively. So in this answer, we've got sentences that flow on from one another and are linked together. So in the third paragraph, it says, unexpectedly thrown together on a new case, detective partners Todd and O'Hara team up to find the clown killer. And then the next sentence follows on from this one by saying the pair struggle, referring to the pair Todd and O'Hara. The pair struggle to get on at first, finding that their lives are just too detached from one another to find any common ground. And then we go on to explain both of the characters in this pair. So how Todd is portrayed and O'Hara is portrayed. And then although they try to break up their partnership. So we've explained that they're two very different characters and then we've used this connective word, although, to lead on to the next sentence and explain what they do about this clash in personalities. So overall, the paragraph works together really cohesively to describe the characters. So how is it suited to audience? Well, it's designed for potential customers, so it needs to be persuasive. And it uses a range of persuasive techniques to do this. So for example, let's take a look at this sentence. Prepare to dive into a world of crime, suspense, and unexpected twists. 
we've got a few different language techniques that have been used to persuade the reader here. So for example, we have this triple at the end, crime, suspense, and unexpected twists, to draw the reader's attention and to create a list of things that are positive about the series. We've also got this word here, prepare. This is a command word or an imperative word that is going to tell the reader what to do, going to persuade them. We've also got some positive sort of persuasive words like dive um, to try and engage the reader and get them interested. And we've got this exclamation mark at the end here to show them that this is a really exciting series and they should definitely watch it. It's also suited to the audience because it is informal. So it's inviting to the reader and it's quite conversational. So we've got these command words to speak directly to the reader. We've got some slang phrases, colloquial phrases like edge of our seats mentioned at the bottom here. And we've got exclamations to create sort of a friendly and excitable tone throughout the writing. So these things make the text match up really well to the persuasive purpose and to the audience of potential um, buyers of the series. The final piece of criteria that you'll be marked on is using complex sentences. So complex sentences are sentences that have multiple clauses, so lots of different parts that are separated by commas or other punctuation, and they link different ideas together. So for example, in this last paragraph here, in this paragraph three, sorry, um, we in the last two sentences, we have some complex sentences here. So Todd is portrayed as an uncaring loner, whilst O'Hara is a glamorous, ambitious detective with some killer outfits to go alongside the image. So here we've talked about Todd at the start, and then we've introduced a new idea by saying O'Hara is glamorous, ambitious, and has killer outfits. So lots of different ideas being connected with commas here. So you should try to include a few complex sentences in your answers. Another example is, although they try to break up their partnership, comma, they are informed by their bosses that the arrangement is unavoidable, comma, and they must learn to like each other. So we've got three different ideas connected with commas into one cohesive sentence here. So overall, the student has given a really effective answer to question two, and this would achieve some very high marks. This is because they have effectively addressed the question and they've given a detailed answer. The answer makes sense and it flows effectively between sentences and paragraphs. The correct formatting has been used as they've included a heading and paragraphs and they've used accurate spelling and correct punctuation throughout the answer. The writing is particularly appropriate for the audience and purpose specified in the question and it's a very persuasive piece that matches up with the informal um, kind of style needed for the audience. So overall a fantastic answer and you can use this to try and come up with your own answer to this question, get creative and try out a few different things and then check your answer for any mistakes at the end.